The Business Mentor Talks is vlogged by no other Armando Boots Bartolome in cooperation with the Manila Times. It aims to bring to life and recognize entrepreneurs who constantly strive to create a living for the community as well. Listen to the Business Mentor Talks with Books Bartolome. And um, what she started is something dynamic. And you might have seen her in different avenues of the social media, the print, or even TV. So without further ado, let me call in Chit One. Good morning, Chit. How are you today? Good morning. Good Sunday morning. Sunday, Sunday is always morning. good. Yes. Tell us, Chit, uh, you have been in the limelight for so many years. A lot of people know you when you, they when they see your name, they see your picture. They always relate to you as the serial entrepreneur. Tell us how you began uh, your journey in your when you were uh, growing up as a young girl in the family. Tell us about uh, the family of once. Well, thank you. Thank you, Boots. You know, I was lucky to have been born in an entrepreneurial family. So in our family, it's normal to talk about business even while we're at the family table uh, eating. You know, business ideas come up and nobody puts down an idea. So it's a continuous brainstorming, if you will. In fact, we got so conscious that one day we said, you know what, for one hour, let's just concentrate on eating and uh, let's not talk. We can talk about anything else except business. Alam mo, tumahimik lahat eh. Walang, walang nagsalita. In other words, uh, wala namang pressure. No? There's no pressure to perform. There's no pressure to, you know, you have to come up with something. But, it just flows naturally. First, you talk about, parang ano eh, uh, in corporate life, you would call it maybe strat planning. You have a landscape check. You, ha- you look at the lay of the land, o oh, kamusta bang ekonomiya, ganyan. Parang may current events. And then ideas come up. Boy, guess what? I met Mr. Bartolome, and he wants to do this, do that. Ah, Mr. Bartolome, yeah, I met him also. Ganyan, sharing, sharing. So out of those meals would come up, you know, ideas na parang na-test mo na. Because your first critics are, you know, your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be the first one to say, that may not work. But in our family, nobody says that. Everybody just lets everyone flow of the serial entrepreneurs. But I think in the family, I would say many of us would have one, two, three businesses, you know. Ako lang kasi yung, I never worked in corporate. Uh, I was always an entrepreneur, but I would serve in the family business. Yun. Uh-huh. So, uh, in other words, it's just uh, the, when you talk with the family during, during your meals, it's just common that uh, you talk about ideas and ideas spring and ideas start to grow. And, uh, but, was this really a primary influence of your parents? Uh, who among uh, among the family? Is it your father, your mother, your your siblings? Who has the strongest influence? Siguro you? ano? Uh, if I look back subconsciously, it could be my father because he is uh, very proud to tell his sons and daughters, oh. I took up dentistry, but look at me. I'm selling spare parts. I'm selling jeeps. You know, he's not, he's not embarrassed to say, I took up 
I don't know how many years dentistry took, maybe six, eight years. He's a doctor. He was top in the in the board exams of dentistry during his time. And yet, he chose to become an entrepreneur. He hung up his gloves. That's why none of us turned out to be professionals. Because yun lang, whenever my sister would say, Dad, I think I want to be a nurse. What? You want to uh, you know, uh, clean up people every day? Is that what you want to do? You know, it wasn't even the service part that he didn't like. He didn't like the fact that you were not going to be an entrepreneur. So that was the influence. Second, we had the playground because my father had the business. You have to do something. You have to apply for minimum wage. You know, whether you're packing handicrafts or you're uh, your mimeo, during the time, mimeograph, no? Mm-hmm. Mimeographing. Uh-huh. You oh, learn yeah. to operate. You learn to operate office machines, the typewriter, the check writer. So he would take us to his office and would pay us a weekly salary. Wow. So uh, with, with those influences, uh, so you, Chit, you grew up to, in this intra- entrepreneurial family. What what venture did you start when you when you were already in your early years? What was the first first venture? Chief? Nako, the very first is of course buy and sell. Okay, my father had the suki that sold chocolates, imported chocolates, and I said, Dad, I'll try. I'll buy a ten bars, ten bars of chocolates, and I'll try to sell it to my classmates. And he did not flinch. Oh, nakabenta naman. After that, I said, you know what? Why am I buying imported? My money will go longer if I buy local chocolates. So okay. back then, I had the thought at grade three, ah, I must have been eight, nine years old. Back then, I'd go with my mom and say, mom, I want to buy a box of local chocolates. And my classmates would say, meron din yan sa canteen eh. And I say, okay, you can buy in the canteen, but here, if you buy from me, it's a little more expensive because of the convenience. And still, I would sell out the local chocolates. <laughs> so, it's basically you're adding values to something that is already present, you know, para bang, uh, convenience is the part. No? So, but uh, yeah, again, yes. uh, so with these influences, uh, okay, you you now uh, studied, uh, you're a UP graduate, I understand, that's it. And, uh, and uh, during your college years, what, were, what was your business again? Did you ever launch another business while you're studying college? Okay. So I asked my father if I could take not commerce, not business management, but hotel and restaurant. And he said, I can't buy you a hotel. I said, Dad, it's okay. <laughs> at least I can do something a little different from my siblings because I'm number eight among eight, eight children. Wow. And so all the really seven to... Family planning at that time. Huh? Family planning at that time. Huh? Eight. Oh, hindi naman kami farmer. <laughs> Alam ko, farmers <laughs> want more children to help in the farm. I guess my father thought, you know, the more the merrier. Kasi dalawa lang sila. Eh. Uh, he only had one sibling. And I guess he thought maybe for my family, I want it to be a fun family of eight. So, uh, you know, being the eighth in the family, I said, Dad, I want to take something a little different. Everybody took commerce, business, business ad, economics. Everything was like that, no? And I said, hotel and restaurant. Yung business commerce, he can use. Eh? He can use in the company. And then, as luck would have it, that degree got me into management of coffee shops. That got me into management of restaurants. Hindi pala hotel. Pero, you know, I trained in a hotel. Um, I remember I trained at the Hilton. Um, mm-hmm. And then, syempre, uh, when you get out of college, you're like, what do I want to do? So the first business out of college. During college, we had a coffee shop near school. I formed the corporation, got partners. We were just, you know, barely 20. 
And then uh, we called it Bread and Butter Corporation. Okay. And we sold Tapsilog to students. So that was uh, during college. And then after college, we'd also hang out in the campus and we liked music. So we put up a music lounge. So lahat yung something we like, you know. And then of course, after the music lounge came coffee. Because we like coffee. Uh, my father is also an influence in the coffee part because I would always smell coffee. And I guess, sabi nila, yung smell gives you a good memory. And for me, the memory was seeing my father at the breakfast table drinking coffee. So maganda yung memory sa akin. And therefore, I also took to coffee drinking. And because of that, you know, we would have brewed coffee. Mm-hmm. Um so I learned how to cook coffee at a young age. I also learned how to prepare scotch because my father also drank scotch whiskey. <laughs> my mom, my mom naman is the influence of food. She's a foodie. She loves to eat. Um, she loves to cook. I never got the cooking prowess, but the eating prowess, yes. Marami ang mga sausawan. You know, we learned how to have a sauce for every viand. Pag lechon kawali, kailangan toyo, suka, sibuyas. Pag inihaw na bangos, it's uh, suka, sile, and all. You know, if each menu, each viand would have a particular sausawan. Mm-hmm. My mom is a melange of Chinese, Bulacan, so Pinoy, and Chinese cooking. So I guess having experienced that, plus my dad's liking fish, seafood, made me the food enthusiast I am today. Right, right. But anyway, uh, you have been, you've been doing a lot of exploration. Uh, but one of the things that uh, people remember, I, I clearly distinguish this because I admire you, is the advocacy for corporate responsibility. Why, what, what made you, what, what, what made you start this advocacy of corporate responsibility. I remember you started saving our Philippine barako. What what made you yes. think on that? What made you think on that? Actually, corporate? you know, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say it was a business strategy. Why? Uh, when we were handling the coffee shop chain, we would need tons and tons of coffee every year. And I committed... I committed at some point to serve only local coffee. That was our brand image. That was our strategy. Pero paano kung walang supply? You know? Correct. Like, paano pag naubos yung kape? Like now, you know, we're out of rice. We're out of pampano. We're out of everything. We're also producing less coffee than our consumption. So I felt we need to go back to the source. Parang business strategy na securing your supply. Correct. Okay? Because I knew how much coffee we were making. We were, we were, you know, needing so much, so many tons of coffee. And I said, I've got to secure that. How will I find, for example, 50 tons of coffee a year? So, nakialam ako, I talked to Department of Trade, I talked to Department of Agriculture, I joined meetings. Then I learned the farmers were giving up coffee because they did not know the market. So sabi ko, I am the market. So you know, 20 years back, I can say, I can show you pictures. And to throw back Thursday because I was on Facebook. <laughs> I find pictures of when I was in Kalinga, I was in Bukidnon. Yeah. So that was over 20 years ago, you know? And if you see the farmer, I explain mo sa kanya, magtanim ka pa kasi ako yung bibili ng kape mo. Mm-hmm. And that pala was a sustainability strategy. Hindi ko alam. Sure. Ang sa akin, yeah. business strategy lang siya. And then, napansin na mga, mga League of Corporate Foundations, sabi na, Oy, Chitwan, sali ka sa amin. Sige, maliit lang po kami. No, what you're doing 
is corporate social responsibility. Ay, exactly. may, may tawag pala dun. Oo, oh, may pangalan okay. pala yung na ginagawa mo, no? May, may, pala yung may pangalan ito. pala yun. <laughs> oh, it's our, it's our responsibility to ensure business sustainability by assuring our producers that we would get their coffee. Di ba? Very simple. It's a mutual mutual understanding. So, naging... Mutual support, di ba? Yeah. Actually, since I enjoy going to the farm, ang dineventure ko ngayon is parang agritourism. Mm-hmm. Farm tourism, responsible tourism. So, I'm also part of a group of uh, parang sustainable tourism uh, people. And we encourage people to look at, let's say, a farm as a tourism site. Para magtanim yung mga tao, yung mga farmers will not just sell products, but can also invite you <clears throat> to their farm so you can appreciate where food comes from. And it comes from my advocacy sa slow food. I'm a big uh, advocate of the slow food movement. The slow food, you want food to be good, masarap, clean, malinis of pesticides, chemicals, and fair. Fair to the farmer, fair to the consumer. So on the principles of slow food, uh, slow food, we encourage people to know where their food comes from. So pag inisip mo, di ba malayo yan sa kape? Hindi, yeah, may slow coffee. You know, oh, okay. there is slow coffee. So, it's all intertwined, Boots. Plus, women empowerment through business. Kasi, a lot of the producers are women. A lot of our SMEs, MSMEs, are women. And, we are three women, the Eco Trio. So, natural na sa amin na to help other women. And we help those who are in the farms. We help small producers. So yun ang naging advocacy namin as a business, as a social enterprise. So you can call me a serial social entrepreneur. You know, okay. kasi mas masaya yun eh. Um, mas masaya yung nakikita mo na, you know, like, I was just in in a province recently and nakita ko dati maliit lang yung bahay nila. Ngayon, lumaki na yung bahay. You know, you've seen their children grow up. They're now passing the baton to the next generation. And that's what we need. We need new farmers. We need young people to get into agriculture, to get into coffee, to get into weaving. Kung hindi, mawawala yan. And a people with no culture is a people without a soul. So, tuloy-tuloy lang kami, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Echo store, kahit mahirap, that's what we do. So, uh, probably, uh, share with the, our viewers uh, some tatlong takeaways that you can share right now with the, uh, the present entrepreneurs, the people who want to go into business, or people who are probably looking at where where the journey would be, what would be your three takeaways to you? Well, siyempre, being a business person, mm-hmm. kailangan naman mag-isip ka ng business na profitable. Kasi kung hindi siya profitable, it will not be sustainable. And if you're not sustainable, you cannot help many people. So first and foremost is uh, it has to be a realistic business that makes business sense. Hindi pwedeng social work lang. Diba? But, ang uso ngayon is, ano, diba? Moderate your greed. Hindi naman sinasabing you will, you're greedy. Hindi naman sinasabing business people are greedy. But, you moderate. How much money do you want to make? Yung iba sinasabi, papayaman na lang ako tapos magbibigay ako. Fine. Kami, we enjoy making the money while helping other people. It's it's fun. Tsaka, especially when you approach midlife, we started Echo Store, we were midlife na, you know, you don't have 30 years to 
to uh, make the money and then help. Kung 20 years old ka lang, fine. So I understand when people are in their 20s or 30s and they still want to see a lot of money first. I can understand that. But for those who start, my father started his last business at 56. Di ba? Pag gano'n na yung start mo, medyo mag-isip ka na na social enterprise ka, hindi lang, hindi lang for the money. And people might say, people might say, uh, what? Walang pera? Hindi. Kailangan may pera. Pero triple bottom line tayo. People, planet, profit. And third, to be sustainable, you have to mind <clears throat> the environment. So, maganda yung CSR naging ESG, no? Mm-hmm. Environment, social, and governance. Kasi dapat, parate tayong tapat sa tao natin, tapat tayo sa gobyerno, and tapat tayo to ourselves. Uh, you heard it right. Uh, what Chet Wan shared with us, you know. And again, uh, I want you to read the article uh, which will be also printed in the print edition of Manila Times uh, to see and to really savor what Chet has shared with us. Again, Chet, good luck and keep on, keep on that journey and keep on influencing and keep up that ESG. What is the ESG? Environment. Environment, social, social governance. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. ESG, environment, social, and governance. Yan po ang ating ano. Again, Chit Wan, you have heard her. Please follow her on. Where can they follow you, Chit? Uh, uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Chit Wan. All right. And uh, yeah, follow her because. You will really learn a lot and you'll be inspired. Wala pang TikTok. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ko pa kaya. Hindi <laughs> pa niya kaya. I mean, tignan mo yan, <clears throat> kahit sinasabi niya, nakikita nga na iba eh, para raw hindi nagiging, uh, hindi tumatanda. In fact, she's even getting younger, right? So, Uy! Uh, <laughs> again, thank, thank you, thank you, you sir. Much. It has been such a pleasure to invite you here in the Business Mentor Talks. And uh, I hope we have inspired so many people. Uh, again, keep in touch and keep us updated what's happening with Chit Wan's uh, journey. Huh? Okay? So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.